behalf of the committee of Father Matthews Basketball Club, it is indeed an honour to welcome you all here today to the formal opening of the Father Matthews Arena. On this special occasion in the club's history, I am delighted to extend a KV to Fulcher, Don Thomas to Simon Coveney, the President of Basketball Ireland of Theresa Walsh, representatives of clubs in the club leagues, members of Father Matthews, club, Father Matthews Basketball Club, past and present, members of the media, and to all our distinguished guests and friends. Thank you also to those guests who weren't able to attend today's ceremony and send their apologies and good wishes. I think it is fitting that we begin today's proceedings by acknowledging the pioneering work of George Gibbons, who founded Father Matthews Father Matthew Basketball Club in 2002 to provide young people in court. to provide young people in Cork with the opportunity to participate in the sport of basketball. I am delighted that Ger is with us today to share in this celebration of the formal opening of Father Matthews Arena. I would also like to acknowledge the important roles played by the club officers that served the club so well during the rapid development of the club over the last 16 years. It is now a vibrant club, the largest in Cork, one of the biggest in the country, providing coaching and competition for boys, girls, men and women, in the city and county of Cork. In November 2017, Father Matthews Basketball Club announced that it had been allocated a sports capital grant of €59,000 by the Department of Transport, Tourism and Sport. This sports capital grant was both a fitting endorsement of the club's contribution to the community and a vital funding resource to enable the club to further advance its key strategic objectives, which include the development of a suitable new premises for the club home. This significant injection makes it possible to further develop the process of preparing and fielding quality competitive teams in the boys, girls, men's and women's local and national leagues. Moreover, it helps to ensure that the younger players in the club have a realistic opportunity of fulfilling their ambitions of playing, competing and representing their clubs at a very high level in basketball. The realisation of this ambition requires the putting in place of the necessary structural standards and facilities within the club. Securing this level of funding from the Department of Transport, Tourism and Sports, combined with the club's own considerable efforts in raising finances, is an extremely important step in charting the next phase of the club's future development. While the Matthews Basketball Club greatly appreciates the encouragement it has received from Antonisha, Mr. Simon Coleman TD, whose support made it possible for the club to reach this important milestone in its development. I would also like to record the club's appreciation of, and of the support it received from Mr. Dara Murphy TV and Senator Jerry Governor. To further the club's future development for all members, a possible venue for suitable premises was identified by the club on the south side of the city, which has very good access from the club's current catchment areas. A detailed evaluation and feasibility study of this venue was undertaken in close consultation with our members, which culminated in the club's executive committee approving the proposal to develop a portion of the old tennis village into this modern, state-of-the-art basketball facility, where we are gathered this afternoon on a very happy occasion. Construction work started in June with the erection of the steelwork fabrication for the baskets, which was followed by a complex lighting upgrade of the, the facility. The frames, backboard, and six, six baskets were fitted in July. The new film was, film was delivered at the beginning of August, which was fitted, line marked, and lacquered for a championship court and two regional standard courts. The project was completed this week with the installation of the two shop blocks above the backboards on the championship court behind me. I'm delighted to report that the development of the Father Matthews Arena is now completed and that the project was delivered on schedule and under budget. <laughs> Father Matthews Basketball Club will be forever grateful to the club members and their families for the commitment to advancing this major development for the club. Their dedication and spirit of volunteerism made a vital contribution to the painting, decorating and construction work. Without their sterling efforts, the project would not have been completed. It is certainly very true that sometimes it's the journey that teaches you a lot about your destination. It has been particularly pleasing to receive encouragement 
and guidance on the project from people outside our club who have a strong basketball credentials, such as Pat Price, Paul Barrett from Neptune, who's here with us today, and Francis O'Sullivan. I am also reminded of a timely comment from Trevor O'Callaghan of Fort Kelts, who's here today as well, on our club's Facebook page, in the early stages of the project, who said, it's risky, said the brain, give it a try, says the heart. As the construction phase has progressed, as reported and shared in the updates and photos on social media, the positive response and feedback from the wider public, players and clubs across the basketball community in Ireland have been greatly encouraging and much appreciated. We are also very grateful for the support we received from both the court ladies and men's board, as well as from Basketball Ireland. While all this work was going on, we still had a club to run, and the members of the Father Basketball Club Committee worked very diligently over the summer months to ensure that the focus on the successful operation of the club was maintained, thereby ensuring we would be prepared, well prepared for the 2018-19 season. In this coming season, the club will be fielding 18 teams in the local two leagues and two at national league level, one being the club's first ever team competing in the Women's Super League. We will kick off this evening against NUI Galway at 5 o'clock. We will also be running a Boys and Girls Academy, a key component of the club's structure, by experiencing many of the players who will be experiencing basketball for the first time. The growth of these academies, no doubt influenced by the development of the arena and the support from coaches like Michael McGinn, has been remarkable. In conclusion, on behalf of everybody in Father Martin's basketball, I would like to thank the committee and all involved for the tremendous contribution they have made to ensure that this project will be completed successfully. The new arena is a fitting monument to their serving efforts. Thank you all on behalf of Father Matthew's Basketball Club. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to thank my own family, Joanne, Lady and Ryan, for their patience and support in affording me the time to go missing this summer and to oversee this project. As we celebrate this proud day in the club's history, may I now call on Teresa Walsh to address the Assembly. Minister Covey, distinguished guests, basketball friends and players, today I am honoured as President of Basketball Ireland to be here for this great day for Father Matches Basketball Club. Father Matches Basketball Club is one of the largest basketball clubs in Ireland with over 200 members and growing steadily. I would like to compliment the work of the present committee under the stewardship of doing it and all the work done by the past members and committees to get to this stage today. The vision and foresight will reap rewards for Father Matches Basketball Club. I'd just like to wish Father Basketball Club all the best in the future in the local and in the national leagues. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. And finally, I'm going to show you a little mind addressing the assembly, please. Thank you. President of Basketball Ireland, uh, Teresa Walsh, uh, Chairman of Father Matthew Basketball Club, uh, uh, and to all the other uh, representatives that are here from other clubs around Cork. Uh, and I suspect from Galway too. Um, you're all very welcome uh, today. I know we're under a little bit of time pressure because uh, 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 two teams need to prepare for a pretty important match in, in about 40 minutes' time. Uh, but I just would like to say a few things uh, to congratulate this club for an extraordinary achievement, really, uh, in recent months. Uh, this has been a fantastic example of a collective effort from club members, uh, committees, uh, parents, um, club members uh, who have uh, done a lot of this work on a voluntary basis in terms of painting uh, and decoration and all the rest of it, but also the professionalism uh, that the committee that came to see me and others uh, to lobby for uh, sports capital funding last year uh, to make sure that you were successful in that. Uh, so many clubs, the first and second time that they apply, fail to get funding because of 
uh, because of mistakes or because of a lack of uh, professionalism in terms of how those applications are made. Um, so the general in particular uh, and the others who have supported him, this really is a fantastic example of, uh, of how to make uh, a really important piece of sporting infrastructure in this city work. Um, Father Matthew Basketball Club has been around for nearly two decades now, has been growing, but really has been relying on the uh, generosity of so many others, mainly schools on the south side of the city, to get the use of halls, whether it was the Ursulines, whether it's Tree Tree, uh, uh, or other schools whereby you were uh, borrowing time uh, to be able to train, to be able to have matches, and so on. Uh, and so, uh, for the first time, Father Matthew now has a home of its own. And not only a home of its own, but one of the finest basketball arenas uh, from a playing perspective, I suspect, anywhere in the country. Uh, and that is because this is a club that is ambitious for the future, for its own members, for basketball in Cork, uh, ensuring that there are high quality championship arenas on the south side of the city as well as on the north side of the city, um, and where we can encourage uh, a lot more young people to see basketball uh, as a way of, uh, of playing sport at a very competitive level. Uh, when this club began, it only had one or two teams. It's now got 20. 18 teams playing uh, across the local leagues, and obviously two teams now in national leagues. And we're about to see, for the first time, Father Matthew uh, playing uh, at a Super League level in terms of the Women's Super League. Super league. Uh, so this is a club that is moving in the right direction quickly uh, because of the volunteerism, uh, because of the determination and the ambition uh, of people who are making this club uh, grow and expand and take from week to week. Uh, and it's fantastic as someone who's hugely committed to sport uh, across this city, a city that in many ways is sports mad, uh, to see a new high quality piece of infrastructure replacing uh, what was something that was pretty stagnant before you took over here. Uh, I can remember as a, you know, as a younger uh, man coming here when the tennis village opened and it was a fantastic uh, new piece of infrastructure at the time. But this is a new chapter in this building's history. It's an exciting one. It's one that's full of energy um, uh, with uh, uh, obviously uh, one uh, uh, championship court here and, and two other courts that will be used on a regular basis by by 20 teams, and I suspect there will be a bit of a cauldron in terms of visiting teams as well. Uh, I'm sure you intend on making it uh, a home venue uh, where you, you become a very, very competitive and difficult team to beat. So on so many levels, uh, today is a great success story, um, and I'm delighted that the government and the Department of Sports and Tourism have played a small part in helping you to do that. And we want to continue to help you to build this club. Uh, when the next uh, ambitious project uh, comes uh, to add to what you've already built here so that we can continue to fund and support uh, the, uh, the, the constant improvement of sporting infrastructure for basketball. Uh, I can tell you as a, um, as a father of three daughters, uh, sporting infrastructure for girls in particular in Ireland is not as good as it needs to be. Uh, and projects like this one, as well as many others that are now underway, are changing that. Uh, and basketball as a sport, obviously for boys, but for girls in particular, I think, uh, is something that we need collectively to be more ambitious on. Uh, and that's why it's such a good news story that we're seeing the first Women's Super League match happening here. Uh, on the day that we launched the Father Matthew Arena, and on the day that we're celebrating a fantastic success story for this club and for everyone who's been involved in it since 2002. Um, so finally, can I just say to, uh, to James Fleming and Neil Dwyer, the two coaches uh, of the team that are going to be playing shortly, uh, good luck today uh, to Galway. Welcome to Cork. Um, uh, I hope you have a very competitive game, but I hope you're disappointed on the way home. <laughs> um, but, but yeah. You're very, you're, very, you're very welcome here today, uh, and uh, it's fantastic to have uh, a team from Galway here on a special occasion uh, when this club marks uh, such a special moment and such a step forward uh, in terms of the facilities and the quality uh, that we are providing for our, for our young players. So congratulations to everybody, have a great day, uh, and enjoy this facility for many, many years to come.
So if I could with you, I guess, uh, uh, Antonio Sandro, the black commemoration of the opening of the Father Matthew's Arena.